Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slap and Daddy Barbecue coming to you from Los Angeles, California. I just have a super exciting treat for you. I have on this virtual tailgate and Zoom call two of the most famous female pitmasters from Canada, Maddie and Kiki. So Maddie and Kiki, please introduce yourself. Hi, Harry. Hi, Harry. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for watching this. We are so excited to be doing this cook with Harry Sue, the Harry Sue. Right now, we're so happy that we can actually have a little master class. So uh, when we were talking on the phone, we were finding, trying to find, figure out what we should do for a little kind of a Kiki, Maddie, and Harry class. And uh, you want to tell people kind of like the genesis of this idea of what we're going to cook today? Okay, well, first of all, I think Kiki, Harry, and Maddie has a good ring to it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a new YouTube channel. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so when we talked to Harry, when we spoke on the phone, we kind of came up with this decision because meatloaf is one of those things that is comforting to pretty much everybody. Yes. Whether you're in Canada, whether you're in the United States, everybody has their own version of making a meatloaf, which is why I'm so excited to see what your version is going to look like. Yeah. our meatloaf is kind of everything that you can think of that's Canadian that goes into a meatloaf. Yes. So it all starts with venison. We have ground venison in our, we're using ground venison in our meatloaf, but we're using a venison and pork mix because as many of you know, if you do hunt or you have access to venison, venison is an extremely lean protein. Yes. So you don't want to make a meatloaf entirely of venison because it wouldn't have any fat to it. You need the pork fat to juice it up. And we like to make this meatloaf with very simple ingredients. So we're going to start off with some green onions. We like to let the venison speak for itself here. And Matt will let you do the mixing here. We have some of our house blend seasoning here and it's just this is a great all-purpose seasoning that we like to use in different proteins that we work with we use it in a lot of vegan dishes that we make on the barbecue as well and then we're going in with an egg and this here is kind of one of our secrets to making our meatloaf is we like to use oats that have been soaked in a little bit of bread and the reason we like doing this is because it serves two purposes it keeps the meatloaf nice and juicy and it prevents it from shrinking on the grill. So it just absorbs the fat from the meatloaf. It doesn't end up in the pan. It stays inside. Yep. Okay. So we're just going to add that in there just like that. So for those of you who don't know or aren't familiar with poutine, it is can one of Canada's most fam famous dishes. And all it is is French fries with cheese curds on top and a very good gravy. So that's why we're stuffing it into this meatloaf because you don't get more Canadian than a poutine. But we're not actually gonna, <laughs> we're not gonna stuff it inside. Maddie and I have made this meatloaf in a multitude of different ways. And we've had it so you can, you stuff it down the center like you would like a jalapeno popper. Yes, but so here, I don't know if you can see that, but it's basically, yeah, a hollowed out. Not hollowed out, but just like a pushed out. It kind of looks like a canoe. Yeah, so exactly, that's, that's right. It's like a venison <laughs> canoe. Because if you were to try to stuff it inside like you would a jalapeno popper, you don't get enough of the poutine. So we kind of like to make it into like a canoe shape. Yeah. And that's where we put it on the grill, just like that. Then once it's like 95% cooked, then we go in with the poutine just to melt the cheese and just to make it ooey and gooey and delicious. Wow. Okay. That looks fantastic. A little uh, Maddie and Kiki canoe meatloaf. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. That's a good name for it, actually. Okay, Today we're ahead. cooking on the Weber Genesis. So, and I want to actually ask, I think Harry knows about this method, but when you're cooking on a gas grill, Harry, are you familiar with what is known as the mom method? No, I'm not. Please explain. Okay. So the mom method is what's referred to as the configuration of the grill. So you start off on one side with one of the burners turned onto medium heat. Then the center is off completely. And then the other side is on medium as well. So that's where you get the MOM, -M, medium off medium. So it's cooked over indirect heat. And then it sort of creates like an oven where the meat yes. is getting evenly cooked inside. It comes off <laughs> looking like this. Once oh, it comes wow. off the grill, it's cooked to a perfect internal temperature of 160. So you want to treat venison just as you would like very similar to beef. It's another red meat, very similar. 
And then that's when we get to stuffing it with the cheese curds. Can you describe to people the flavor of the cheese? Is it like uh, Swiss cheddar, mozzarella? What, what is the basis of the flavor? Okay, so it is very similar to like a fresh mozzarella. So it's salty. It has a little bit of like that mozzarella type brine. And it's like Kiki said, it has a squeakiness when you chew into it. It's so fresh that it's squeaky. So you guys saw how Maddie and Kiki did the uh, venison inspired poutine style Canadian meatloaf. I am going to do a more sort of a traditional recipe. When I cook, I always ask myself the question, right? Uh, what? are the characteristics of the best barbecue meatloaf. And uh, I like meatloaf that is moist, not dry, is not soggy or greasy. Uh, the meat's got to have a good chew, great flavor. It's not bland. It's got to be also tender. And then when you slice a meatloaf, it's got to slice so that it will fit in a sandwich and not fall apart and be crumbly. And then the last thing I like in a meatloaf is that it's got a nice caramelized outside crust. So I'm going to share with Kiki and Maddie, as well as all the viewers watching, the seven best tips I have for creating the best barbecue meatloaf. So the first thing I want to point out is that you need aromatics. So there are many kinds of aromatics in the world. Uh, the normal one that I like to use is a holy trinity of some celery, bell pepper, and onions. You can do a mirepoix, which is the traditional French of the onion calorie. Car uh, carrot and celery. Uh, you can also kind of do a sort of a, a, like Italian style. You can use onions, garlic, and tomatoes. And uh, you can also do a German version, which is carrots and celery root and leeks. But I've done a very Ooh. simple one here. I've sauteed the celery and the bell peppers and the onions to make the aromatic base. Also, I like to add pork onto my meatloaf because uh, Pork has a lot of collagen, so the collagen will allow the meatloaf to retain moisture and not become dry. And the next tip I want to show you guys is not, not to overmix because when you kind of mix it too much, it then tends to become too thick and you want to let the component in the pork called the myosin, you want to let the myosin link the beef so that it creates a protein network so it's not crumbly. So that you. Uh, next tip also is that don't overcook. So I'm going to cook it on a pellet cooker here. You want, I'm cooking it at 350 degrees today. And you want to make sure that you don't overcook your meatloaf. I like to cook my meatloaf to around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Let it rise to 165. And we want to cook it in a smoker because you get so much better flavor when you smoke it in an actual smoker. And then uh, the other thing I also use is my last tip for you is that I cook my meatloaf naked. What does that mean? Uh, when I say naked meatloaf, that means I cook it on a cedar plank. And uh, that way the meatloaf will drain, any excess grease will drain off the meatloaf. And also I don't like to wash, so the, the, the uh, cedar plank will allow me to serve the meatloaf right on a plank. And then after my guests are done, I just toss away the plank. So that's pretty much how I do it. I'll show you guys a, a quick way to mix everything all together. So I have the meat in here. I'm going to add the egg. So, and what the egg does is it binds the proteins together and it allows everything to basically bind. I'm going to add also a little bit of dairy. Uh, you can use milk, but I like to use sour cream because I think it has great flavor. About a uh, three quarter cup of sour cream and uh, add some breadcrumbs, about one cup of breadcrumbs. The liquid I'm going to use is a uh, Worcestershire. I'm going to put about three tablespoons of Worcestershire, kind of eyeball it. That's about two. That's about three tablespoons. A little bit of salt. I'm going to use uh, a little bit of a beef rub, uh, my mula beef rub. About one tablespoon of beef rub. A little bit of uh, mustard. I, I like to use dry mustard. About one tablespoon of mustard for flavor and a little bit of a tomato sauce to kind of provide that kind of ketchupy feel to the meatloaf and also to provide a little bit of moisture, probably about uh, maybe half cup of this. And that is essentially the entire mix and you want to mix it together. And this is best done with the hands. So I'm going to use my hands and get really dirty. So the key here is also to not over mix. So I'm actually folding the technique that I'm using is folding the meat with the ingredients and you want to mix it but not overdo it because once you start mixing it and the protein mixes too much, the meatloaf has a tendency to kind of have a little hard texture. 
so the key is to have a little bit of a kind of a crumbly texture, but not so crumbly that the entire meatloaf falls apart. All right, so we've got the mirepoix, which in this case, the holy trinity of the celery, bell pepper, and onion mixed in there. Now, the tip I have for you is that always saute your aromatics. Don't put it in raw. Number one, the pieces of vegetable will not cook completely in two hours, and you're going to end up with meatloaf that's kind of lumpy with bits of vegetables on it. You may like it that way, but I think it tastes a lot better. And once you sweat the vegetables, the result is that it's going to taste a lot better when the vegetables are kind of cooked and kind of mixed into the cooked meat. So plop it down on the cedar plank here and shape it into a little mound or log. And there you have it, it's ready to go. So this is Harry's little football going into the <laughs> canoe. <laughs> so I'm gonna put it in a pit now to show you guys how it's done right in the middle. And let it get happy for two hours. Um, I'm going to cut mine now and I'm going to take a slice here. That it's basically a slice that looks like that. It's even got a little bit of a smoke ring on it. And uh, let me do a taste test. All right, so here's the meatloaf and uh, it looks absolutely amazing. So like I said, the texture is very important. So you don't want it to fall apart. So look at <laughs> look at the uh, the texture and the color of, of the meatloaf. I'm gonna take a bite now. I like meatloaf that has a wonderful texture and uh, a little bit of a glaze on the side. So I'm gonna glaze it with a little bit more of the sauce here. Ooh, it tastes oh, really good yeah. with more glaze, all that. Wonderful smokiness from the wood here. Wow. So it's really good with a little bit more sauce. And it's customary also to smother the entire meatloaf slice with all the sauce that you like. Um, my sauce has a little bit of heat in it. So it's got a nice, spicy, sweet kind of flavor. No. Any other thoughts we want to share with the viewers regarding this episode? But we just wanted to ask when you're not grilling, what is something that you like to do? Because everyone knows you as being like a master of barbecue, uh -huh. the ultimate grill master. We just want to know something that you love to do that maybe even would surprise us. Okay. Um, what I like to do when I'm not cooking barbecue is actually focus on uh, personal health and diet. And uh, a lot of people don't know this, I'm going to reveal it for the very first time on this episode with my friends in Canada. Oh. That uh, Breaking news, uh, even though Harry cooks a lot of meat for the YouTube channel and eats <laughs> meat, I have been trending more towards a healthy lifestyle. And uh, I've been trying to eat more food uh, with more vegetables and whole grains and plant-based food. So sometimes I think that people don't realize that you can really enjoy some great barbecue brisket, enjoy ribs, enjoy chicken. But at the same time, you also want to focus on eating some of the other food groups out there, such as grains, greens, beans, uh, and so on. So uh, I try to eat also uh, mix up my diet with some plant-based food so I don't eat just barbecue all the time. All right, let's... Uh... See if Mr. Beans enjoys some meatloaf. So here's the meatloaf that I made with me, Kiki and Maddie. So you can have a bite here. Delish, you enjoyed it, Beans? Excellent. Thanks for stopping by and watching my episode with my buddies, Kiki and Maddie from Canada. We're gonna be doing future episodes cooking together on a virtual online platform like Zoom. So please come join us for our future episodes and thanks for stopping by to watch this one.